Well, we're jumping ahead. Welcome, friends. I am the designated talker tonight. I have been told, Kelly, I need you there to talk because you guys caught up with us a couple weeks ago. We had COVID and it super sucked. And I don't know what kind of censorship we'll get just because they said that word. But we're better. We feel good. Except Bo cannot talk very, very well. So. Well, I can't talk more than like maybe five minutes and then I'm just, yeah. Just hard. It's just yeah. hard. So welcome. And despite a ill Bo who is recovering, we brought a cute baby. So that should make up for some of it. And we're going to jump into some of the things that we think you should and should not waste your money on for shed to house builds, beginning your homestead, or getting from the suburbs to the homestead. Thanks, Charlie. We are feeling much, much better. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, we'd love to hear, before we kick off, where you guys are listening from, um, what your questions are about shed to house, and um, maybe like what brought you here tonight. Like, What's the one thing you really want to listen to? Or you just love hearing Bo and I chat back and forth. While you're letting us know where you're from and what you'd like to know about tonight, if you have questions, put those in capitals. If you're just chatting back and forth, keep that in like regular text. That way we can see what the questions are and we'll highlight them as we chat through this live tonight. So if this is your very first live, you get an extra super duper welcome for us. We love that you are here and we want to talk about our sponsorships that bring us here to you guys twice a month. Usually we're coming the first Monday and the third Monday of the month. Um, but I'm going to tell you why we're doing Tuesday instead of Monday yesterday. Um, so United Portable Buildings is our sponsorship. They are our favorite, favorite company to work with. And here's why. We could bring you absolutely any different kind of sponsor for your shed to house build. But the reason we've gone with United Portable Buildings is because we've built a relationship with them that we can honestly stand beside and say, hey, these are guys, these guys are going to give you amazing service. They're going to give you incredible quality for the home that you build. And they're going to walk you every step of the way through the build that you have in mind, even helping you create something if you're stuck at the very beginning. So what we've done from for your very first step to build your shed to house, even if you just want to come and play around, is fill out this link for the shed to house configurator from United Portable Buildings. This is how you could like, um, you know, your kids might play Minecraft or maybe you played that game The Sims like way back, was that 90s? That dates us for sure. And in that game, you could like build your little world. Well, this is how you build a little shed to house in 3D. And you can create <clears throat> where you want to put the doors, what kind of windows you want, what is the color on the siding that you're interested in. You can and, even build like the electrical package. You yeah. can put outlets. Yeah. It's, I, it's a little bit more intense than I can. But I think the configurator is the best first step for anyone to get started with Shed to House, and it's totally, totally free. So it doesn't cost you anything. If you love what you build, someone will call you if you decide, and they'll connect with you about creating your actual Shed to House. We were just talking with them last week, and several of you guys have ordered directly from this link. So thank you, because that helps us continue to bring you more free content. And, and if, also, you want us to, if you want to work directly with us, just email us, contact us, let us know. And we would love to be able to get you. Uh, we'll help from. you get into your shed house. It's yeah. really cool. It's one of our favorite things <clears throat> is chatting in the DMs on Instagram with you guys, chatting right here where we get to like really interact live and then helping you get into your shed to house is just the coolest thing because we love our shed to house. So if this is your first time here on a shed to house live, go ahead and let us know in the comments, raise your hand, throw an emoji up. Let us know it's your first time here because you are welcome and wanted. We're so excited to get to talk with you tonight. Uh, so I'm going to say hello to a few people. That's awesome. Rogers all the way from Panama. Way cool, guys. Hey, Sherry from North Carolina. We've got David in Whiteville. Chief. PVFD, I want to say that's specialist, but I could be wrong. Um, in Ebenezer, I love the name of your of your town. That's so cool. All right, we've got Ebenezer, Missouri. Sherry and Stokes, 
and Tiffany. First time. Hey, Tiff. Put Tiffany All the way up there. It's her first Florida. time. Way to go, Tiffany. We just got to celebrate you for that first time. That's awesome. Oh, on Facebook, too. Nice. Way to go. So, are you in the Shed the House group? Or are you just on? Yeah, I would assume that you're in the Very Shed the cool. House group. All right, you hit it again. Okay, Kentucky Bluegrass. Excuse me. So then you would star her question. Uh, oh, over what? to the right. Just so Bo's guiding me, guys. No, not so. her question. Oh, uh, Sherry's. Okay, great. So that we can come back. Yeah, if you, ask me, if you, yeah, if that's how you want to run. She's doing great. If you're just <laughs> coming in, Kelly is running the show because I literally cannot talk for more than five minutes and then I'm coughing. It is uh, still recovering. You're doing mm -hmm. great. Feeling but, so much better though, like. But so I gave a shot to I was a cow say, can yesterday. We, can we share with you guys? Oh. I would say it's on topic because anything we do is on topic with a oh shed to house because we live in one. But this is shed to house, homestead, city people doing things for the first time on their property. So we have two dairy cows. One is a cow and one is a yearling heifer. And we are going to AI our dairy cow. So the Goldie, who is like three years old now, um, we are going to AI her. And so we've been giving her hormone shots. I know if you have a bull, you do it the good old nature way. We don't, and we don't want one. And so we're AIing this cow. But part of what we have yet. to do is um, oh, we have yeah. to give her hormone shots and then she'll, for two weeks, and then she'll actually be um ai'd next monday so over almost a month's process we didn't even know it was that like in depth but bo did the whole thing yesterday and give a was... shot and then i had to pull out this thing what was it called i put it in the video i don't know it's, it's a intense. controlled something drug remember i don't know it's like this it's this plastic y thing you guys you have to watch the video tomorrow uh today's tuesday yeah I'll, i'm gonna put it yeah, up tomorrow. i won't tell you what it looks like but when it you see it you'll know what i thought it looked weird like. it's so Hilarious. gross and weird atx girl from austin hey i love that Okay, David in Southeast Asia, neighbors with Indonesia and Australia. Very cool, David. Glad you're here. Oh, no, you're not. Silvano, you are in Southeast Asia. Sorry about that. Wow. Okay. Great shed, questions. I see a couple of questions there. coming in. Go ahead and put them in all caps if you guys have questions for us that you want to make sure we get to chat through before the end of the hour. And that way... Um, that way we can all make sure that you guys get the most out of your time together. This little person made it all the way through um, a Costco trip. Today. Was that her first Costco? Yeah, absolutely her I first Costco. I think it's her first. It is. Costco. It is. She, no, I there's think. no way. No, we know. have stopped by one once on the ah. way home from Houston. So, but first trip where mom took all five children, got through <clears> Costco, and got home, and we all still love each other. Great success. I'd say I'm very impressed with you, <laughs> but yeah, I know that you're a pro and you do it. I am, but it's still, it's, it's still impressed impressive. With it's me. still impressive for sure. <laughs> okay, so we've shared with you that we've had COVID in the last two weeks. We've had our cow who is getting hormone shots and getting ready for her AI. And then we start school this week, which is exciting and fun. And all our kids are super stoked out about that. We do a Charlotte Mason homeschool co-op. And uh, and then we've got some fill in the blank kind of conversation for you guys that I think might be helpful. So I just shared with you our Shed to House configurator. And tonight I would love to talk more about with you guys um, about things like what should we spend money on for and what should we what should we not waste our money on right like maybe now is not the time and so what are the ways that you can wisely spend your money as you're getting from the suburbs or the city onto your homestead so if you are in the suburbs or city let us know in the chat just type in suburbs city if you are on your homestead type homestead and that way we know a little bit more about our audience and you guys know a little more about each other so before we jump into what things I would recommend spending money on and what I would recommend not spending any money on. 
Um, let's answer some of these questions because these are really good. Um, first question is right here with Sherry. <coughs> Excuse me. So Sherry asks, how much does a home like this run? This is a great question. And not to be um, a, <laughs> like not to be elusive about it and not talk about it, but we do have a link to our shed to house report. And this is what we put into our shed to house broken down, almost itemized, but not super detailed, just more detail like insulation and electricity and plumbing. I was going to say it depends, but I assume that you're looking at the thumbnail for this video right. and you're referring to our house. Yeah. So we have two buildings. We've got our house, which is a 16 by 48. So 16 wide, 48 long. And then we built on, so if you look at our videos, you're going to see really long porches so all, the porches on the front and the back of the house are also the length of the house so the porches are 48 long and then one of them is 10 feet deep and one of them is uh 12 feet deep and that basically gave us more outdoor foot uh square foot than our indoor square footage but we really wanted to move out into the homestead we wanted to be outside and even as it's been <laughs> high 90s 100 degrees persistently for the last few months we spent a lot of time outside so this has been a good option for us if you're looking at our 16 by 48 just the shell is probably what you're asking what was that running like <clears throat> well I, I would say so the the shell, and this is all before covid yes like i have unfortunately i need to do more research on how much these buildings are costing now um so Please forgive me. This is all pre-COVID numbers. Um, I think the shell was around 20 grand. I think that we, so I, I, once, I once ran numbers on this uh, in a way that you would be able to build something similar to what we did. In the main house. In the main house for about $55,000. But that does not include our porches. That would I that may or may not include a septic uh, that would get you electric that would get you water because you're going to have to do things like that and you know uh, you're not going to you're not going to build a well for that price um, but so but you would probably be in a composting toilet at that price you wouldn't have the uh, the porches but it would get you all the it would still get you spray foam insulation flooring mm -hmm. all that stuff I think you could do it for around fifty five grand. We did not do that. Uh, you can get the full, uh, you can just type in bettertogetherlife.com yeah. slash report. Um, Kelly's going to put it in the- in Is the, it life or homestead? Uh, life. So I haven't, uh, y'all, You we have uh, updated our website. We are now fully Better Together <clears> Homestead, <throat> but the website, uh, there's we're, all of our freebie stuff is still on Better Together Life. So anyway, be excited. A lot of moves have been happening. So the many. Scenes. What do y'all think about our logo? You like the logo? I think. It's I good. think it's great. I love it. Uh, we so, also have. So uh, Sherry's asking, how much does this run? That's our house. What about the studio? The studio. I did a video on it. The studio is fourteen by twenty. Four, uh, four, uh, fourteen by twenty-four. Yes, fourteen uh, by twenty-four. And. I think this, I, the, the shell for this one, of course, that included the spray foam and electrical package. I think it was around 15 or 16 straight from United Portable Buildings. And <clears throat> some of the cool features in this studio that... And that was after COVID. So that was in, that increased was, price. And that was, um, so <laughs> United Portable Buildings did not build our home and I wish it had. Yeah. After having our studio, it's like our favorite uh, place. This is so quiet and calm and really sturdy and just feels great. This has a loft in it. So if you've seen the different tour videos, the studio has one loft and it can be a sleeping loft, but we just have it in our, um, like kind of like our storage right now, really accessible and it's all wide open. So. We get up in the loft for all kinds of stuff. Like I was up there. Oh, yeah. The attic. Yeah, we call it the attic, even though it's not really an attic, but it works as one. So um, two different styles of homes. The studio has one loft. It has a full bathroom, so sh standing shower and toilet. And then it has like a mini kitchen. So there's a sink. 
a stand-up freezer. This is where our, our freezer, one of our <coughs> freezers is. And um, so this would be like kind of even more space than an efficiency apartment. Right behind us, those doors that you see, that's our Murphy bed. So it's really cool space. Had a baby in here <laughs> a couple of months ago. And um, we I- We recorded an entire get off your tail and homestead course in yeah, here. I would build a dozen of these. I love this building so much. So that's how much of it, how much hey, it's run and sharing. We can get the boys one of these. That's right. We could. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys, for our clearing our throats. I know. I know. We're doing it. All right. So David asks, is our shed insulated? Yes, it is. It's insulated with uh, spray foam insulation in the walls, and then it's insulated. Cool. Go ahead. Uh, so it's it's all – this studio is all closed cell spray foam right. underneath and the walls and the mm -hmm. ceilings. Ours is closed cell spray foam underneath right. the building and then open everywhere else. Yeah. So insulated, I like spray foam. Um, we also looked into sort of the wool insulation. It was just not a good fit for us, but there are several options. You can do the Pink Panther. You can do kind of a cleaner version of that that's DIY. You can do the wool insulation, the spray foam. Um, the or the people, just... yeah, the reason why people like the wool is because it is it is like that organic yeah. thing, but you gotta think about this. If it's good for you, organic for you. Now, this is just weird, and I feel we're organic people. But also, <laughs> it's organic for all of the critters that want to live. It's a perfect home for critters living inside of your walls. We have a lot of critters. So <coughs> you get to decide what insulation is a good fit for you. Just know there's lots of options. Yeah. Okay, so that follows Georgia, up 50 on 50 people. Sheets. 50 people are here for you. Way That's to go. That's so great. So that follows up foam or roll in insulation. We went ahead with the spray foam. Um, we did not DIY it. I can't, we haven't tried that product, so I can't like stand by it and say, hey, yeah, DIY the spray foam insulation. In fact, it's the reason why we did not do it ourselves because it's a big chemistry experiment. And I don't know that I want to experiment with that. No, everybody's afraid of uh, spray foam off gassing and being dangerous for you. Um, that's why you hire a professional because yeah. if you try to do it yourself and you mess it up, that's whenever it can have some really dangerous off gassing. She's getting tired. Yes, so like, it's that bedtime for the baby. Um, fiberglass is dangerous. That's what David's saying. Absolutely. In fact, that was one of my complaints. I said that when we were sick the other week, that one of the weird things about it, and I shared a little on my Instagram, was that our skin felt like we were just walking through or wearing clothes made out of fiberglass. It was just so sensitive. So absolutely, what? I would avoid the, like the stinginess of our skin just felt like we had that? fiberglass. I did. Oh, yeah. you're talking about COVID. Yeah, when I wasn't. Oh, I thought you were talking about fiberglass insulation. No, I was confused. They're listening. Yeah. Even if you're not. Hey, I'm, you're doing great. Kelly's killing it, y'all. Give Everybody give a thumbs up for Kelly. She is I rocking and rolling. That. Okay, uh, so let's check out this. A couple more questions. You guys have awesome questions. I'm going to go with the um, shed to house questions, and then I'll come back to some of the homestead stuff. But nothing is off the table. So ask whatever you have like on your mind or you've just been scrolling through YouTube and you're like, ah, why don't I ask these strangers this question? Sounds good. Um, David asks, do we have a screened-in porch? <laughs> we do not, but kind of thinking that would be a really great option for us um one of the things about your screened in porch is if if you have a 48 foot porch you might screen off a section of that porch instead of the entire thing we also have a lot of little kids so george is the littlest she's just three months and then we have um a, a just turned five-year-old a just turned eight-year-old an almost 10-year-old an 11-year-old and so just think about all the activities that go on with this age range of kids, throwing the soccer ball around, playing with every kind of stick and lightsaber and fun bouncy ball that you can imagine. I'm going to rip through that screened in porch probably three times a season. And See, so I think you could totally handle it. The reason why you don't want it is because you don't want it in the location that it would work best yeah because you think you think it's ugly in the front yeah i don't want to obstruct the the yeah. porch so 
Um, but that's my take is I love the idea of a screened in porch. I think our next house that we build will have screened in porches, uh, but it'll be so that it looks prettier. What kind of house is that going to be, baby? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> my, my planned out sketches on paper are barn dominiums. But then there's also a shed to house option where it's like a dog trot run. So this could be a lot of different things. So we do not have a screen and porch, David, but I highly recommend them. And I think they make very much good <clears throat> space or use out of an outdoor space, especially if you have a hot area. I'm going to let Bo answer this next question now that he's coughing about anchors and tie downs. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm four. Four. You should do them. Yeah. Yep. Um, we have anchors on this one on the studio. So the smaller building, we have anchors. And the, then the company that did it for our main house did it so poorly and sent someone out who had no idea what they were doing. I literally was able to pull the anchor out with my left arm. So it was like, like, I'm like, what are you doing? Not this very is good. like, it was so that we, company's not even in business anymore. I know. I was going to say, we've uh, made a lot of mistakes. So if you guys want to ask about those <laughs> kinds of things, we will definitely give you good, bad, and ugly because there's so many things that we're like, man, we would do that a little bit differently. If you look at our um, bettertogetherlife.com link up above where it says the report, that um, has like costs that we spend, and you guys might look at that and think oh. like, whoa, y'all way overspent on that. Lisa has a fantastic question. Okay, I'll ask Lisa's next. So I think that um, when it comes to like the details of your house, yes, if you need anchors or tie downs, I don't think those are as effective for like your tornadoes. But if you're like, we're really experienced from Houston with hurricanes and so absolutely in that kind of situation natural disaster wise tie downs for sure go for it and um, i would recommend it i think i think it makes your house feel really secure okay i'm going to answer lisa's question lisa asks how permanent i'm guessing a building like this would be looking for something for my 81 year old mom to be on her property but not permanent once she passes away this is a great question lisa i love i also love like you're thinking outside of the box where you can make this uh, a part of your life for a season and then maybe change it up do you want me to answer that yeah go for it okay. i just think that nobody has ever asked us that yeah this is a great they've question. always said like how long will these last and this you're like you're wanting it to not be as well and maybe permanent. be versatile yeah so like once your mom isn't still living with you guys <clears throat> then that could look like um very easily two options like if this were us living this out and saying hey we want a structure but not something forever we would build a smaller one probably close to this size and uh, make sure it's uh like handicap accessible so you want the doors to be the right configuration you want to be play with the configurator do the shed to house configurator definitely want two doors you're, yeah you're if gonna someone's want, living in there you're gonna sleeping. want an entry exit right just for safety standards if you're putting in a bathroom you're gonna want that to be wide enough so that you can get any kind of accessibility they need so um wheelchair or walker accessible same thing with like the bath and shower just make it all accessible one cool thing that i think people should do not that you asked lisa but I think people should do a wet bathroom for small spaces like this. And I think it is so cool to make the whole bathroom a shower. That's just me. I think it's awesome. But I was like, I hate those ideas. No, it's just, I, love it. I, think, you, I think those are great if you're going to have some sort of really high, like really strong floor. So if you're going to have conk, I know I'm doing great. Doing uh, awesome. I can't believe I'm doing this. If you have like a concrete floor, I'm all for a wet bathroom, but these these floors are fantastic. They are waterproof. They are rot proof. We have a uh, our entire flooring. That's one good thing about our about our home. Asking. I'm just I saying. Just wanted I'm, to make a note. I apologize. Um, you guys, I love this baby so much. Can't She's whisper. Yes, yeah, we got. I love this baby so much. She's so freaking cute. You gotta take like, your, oh my gosh. You can't see your face. Well, just yeah. turn her. No, just no, turn. I'm saying your face. No, I'm saying you turn the baby. Show people how cute my baby is. Is she asleep? Oh, yes, she is. And she's so cute. 
so I have to like sit okay, like this. Okay, so the whole Lisa, time. can I answer your question for you? I'm so sorry it's taken this long. It is very flexible. In fact, we've even considered if we ever needed to move from our seven acres that we're on now, we could pick these up, both of our buildings, and we can move them. Not as easily as an RV, not as easily as a tiny house on wheels, but you could absolutely move these or sell them. So if we wanted to, um, we've talked about this in building our next house. If we wanted to sell our main shed to house, our house that we've lived in, we could absolutely sell this online and then a moving company can come pick up our shed to house and move it. There will probably be some cracks in the drywall and um, it would obviously need to be re-leveled when it gets to the new place. But yes, this does not have to be permanent. It's not on a slab. Even if you set these down on a slab, you can still lift them up and move them. Well, uh, we were even talking about it and this is an option that we're throwing around. It's not, it's not permanent. This this option is if we we're going to have to build some sort of new home. We're just we got five kids. Uh, this it was a great experiment. It was amazing. It was fun. It was always meant to be an adventure house. <clears throat> yeah. So we're going to build something bigger, uh, a single home that you know probably 15, 18, maybe two thousand square foot. But uh, I what I think I want to do is then take it'll be kind of close right here it doesn't make sense for us to have three homes right next right. to each other and that might be your thought is hey i need to be able to have this building next to me close to me so where my mom is not too far away because she's 81 plus but then once you know once like you said that uh, she passes um our idea is we'll probably build a new home and then we'll take our studio and move it to the back of our property and uh create make that be an airbnb more of like an mm -hmm. off-grid type airbnb to where we don't have to uh like we can just have a composting toilet or something yeah, like that exactly uh, yeah. we can maybe do solar for the and, and then someone who is interested in that they can pay a little extra to stay at an off-grid airbnb then it's an income stream so if you're looking at it not being permanent that absolutely could be something that you could do. If you do a lot of the work yourself, then um, there's a lot of value in your labor for finishing one yeah. of these out. You could easily sell it. Yeah. I would just say no, I would say plan that it's not gonna be permanent. So um, I would You're not attach it to a slab. I yeah. would not attach it to a concrete slab. I would not build anything extravagant for porches. Uh, cause you're going to have to dismantle all that. So, you know, do your, yeah, that's a good point. do your, uh, your wheelchair access and stuff like that, but make it just know that you're going to move it. Yeah. So like right now comparing our two buildings, the one that is our main building where we live with the giant porches, that's going to be a lot more work for us. If we ever want to move that building, this small shed to house, our studio, not only in size is going to be easier to move to the back of our property, but also the the way that we've structured porches around it, there's just stairs walking up. Eventually, if we decide not to move it, we have plans for like a larger porch. But that's a really good point is plan for what happens next. And mm -hmm. honestly, we'd all be a lot better off if we planned right now. We're thinking of some major purchases that we need for our family. Like Bo's like, what's our next <clears throat> five moves? So not just what do we want in the next house but what will that house be in the next um 10 years what do you this one yeah so okay. kelly's talking about more strategic things uh i think that yeah. this could be a good time to talk about share with it yeah uh so um one of the next five moves that we have planned out is our next house but we began this practice of what are our next five moves probably 11 years ago so we're we've almost been married 14 years and 11 years ago we really started thinking like all right we're having our first child what do we want to be doing in five years so we would talk about what does our family look like in five years where do we want to be living in five years just not just what's our next step but what is the next step after that and the next step after that so we wrote our course get off your tail and homestead and we've actually been doing this behind the scenes um, probably for like three months now, just since four months, since before Georgia was born. 
So we wrote a book back in Katy when we were getting off our tail and homesteading. Yep. And then um, we refined that course and we've put it or that 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 book and we put it into a course with a complimentary workbook. We've got swag for people who are registering. And this is one on one chance where if you are planning your next five moves onto your homestead or you've just gotten there and you want to know how to make money from your homestead so that you can actually be there instead of spending all your time commuting back and forth, this is the course for you. This is the course where you get to not only sink your teeth into reading how someone did it, but then actually taking the practical parts and applying it to your life. You'll also get one-on-one -on -one with us. So yay for a shed to house where we get to chat here like this. But what if we could chat video back and forth? What if you could show us your site for where your shed to house is going? What if you could show us the animals you're considering purchasing for your homestead or a project that you really want to turn in to income that you can do from your house instead of having to commute? These are the things that we want to be available for you and finally feel like we're at like, hey, we've put in those 10,000 expert hours. We can absolutely coach you through this. So if that's something you're interested in. If there's no commitment. Just jump on the wait list that I just dropped in the comments. That's going to be the wait list for the Get Off Your Tail and Homestead course. You'll have um, first introductory access to the prices there. And you'll also hear more about the course and kind of what it looks like to um, participate as a member for that course coming up. So it's going to be launching in the next two weeks. We want to give you guys lots of heads up time and even time to budget so that you can plan your next five moves really well. Okay, um, let me get back to some questions. That was a nice quick pitch. I feel like I'm doing really great with this sure. whole talk for an hour thing. Usually I'll talk for an hour and, and my children are not that interested in listening. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer this question from David, and then I've got one from ATX Girl coming up next. So David asks, you could put heavy metal screening up. So I'm guessing, David, that's your suggestion for, like, porching maybe? Probably, or like, is... to make it stronger. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, if you're doing weather, I guess you could put metal screening up. I'm not sure how that would necessarily hold up the structure of your house better. No, I think he's talking about a screened in. I assume that you're talking about a screened in oh, porch. Oh, the screened in to porch. To make a screened in Sure. As long as that can keep out the bugs. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, keep out those no seams. And, you know, depending on where you live, your bug <laughs> situation is going to be different. I hear up north, you guys don't have as many mosquitoes. That's That sounds fantastic right now. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, and the uh, So, yeah, other options, right? Okay, so ATX Girl asks pros and cons of buying a wooded property over pasture land for your homestead. My friend, Good one. have you Good been one. following along here for some time? Because yes, Great. I love this conversation and it actually sounds a lot like you're considering your next five <clears throat> moves. What are you doing? Not only when you get on your property, but how are you making your property work for you? A passion of ours when we moved to our property was how do we steward the land well? Because most of you guys know that topsoil is really, um, Kind of like a fragmented, fragile situation on a lot of homesteads. Because if your homestead has been developed in any way, there are likely parts where entire inches of your topsoil has been lost. So this is a great question. And I'll start with that reasoning. And then let's chat through some more. If you guys have ideas about um, buying wooded versus pasture property, go ahead and drop that into the chat. Because this is a really great topic to talk around. So... Buying wooded property versus um, pasture land, or maybe it was um, a hay field or previously farmed land, right? There's so much of that where we live. And if you're in Austin, then you know a lot about that too. You guys have so much land that has gone from pasture to land developed now. So we think back to where we lived in San Marcos and we would drive to Austin. This used to be nothing but pasture after pasture, you would see actual longhorns in Texas right off the highway. And since then, they have literally paved paradise and put up parking lots everywhere. So you want to choose a place that is going to work for you in the long run. I highly, highly recommend wooded areas. However, I think that it's important to remember that you want usable land. You want usable property. And so 
even if you're looking for wooded areas, look for a property that also has water on it if you can get watered property. Like um, a pond would work or if you can get access to a spring or a, or a creek or a, or a stream, that's a great option. Then the wooded areas, our property is not perfect, but it is about 40% wooded. So out of seven acres, we have a large, thick wooded area, and then um, our we have tall trees and brush that block us from the street. And some things that that do, does is it gives us privacy, and then it also actually really helps. We live on a dirt road, and the more length of time that we've lived here, the more people have moved here, the more traffic there is on our main road, and the dirt kicks up, but what we notice on our property that's got trees at the front is that those trees are almost like a filter. That dirt does not get from the road to our house, but just two properties down, they have a paved dro uh, driveway and their house is has no woods um, between the house and the road. And uh, the previous owners, for sure, we discussed with them and they said, man, when, when it's the dry summer, all of the boxes that we get delivered to our house or even just like coming in from our front porch is covered in dust. So I think there's a lot that trees can do for you. If you can find trees, like especially in your area, like pecan trees, fruiting trees, that's a great option. If you can find cedar on your property or even mesquite, these are great trees to have, even though mesquite is very invasive, like very invasive. I think that properties with trees on them are always going to be a great option. Another thing about <clears throat> uh, nearby us is there's a hay field. And the cool thing about this hay field is this is a very easy, remember thinking your next five steps, this is a very easy property that could become a you pick garden. So if someone bought that property and just put out a patch for pumpkins, this could be an instant, almost instant, um, Income stream. income stream for that property that you didn't have to go out and build. You could do it right from your house. This is a great place where it could be pumpkin patches or watermelons or strawberries. And I know that sounds silly, but let me tell you, if you guys are on here and you're thinking seriously about homesteading and you could turn your property into you pick for portion, like an acre of it, you have this whole slew of people who are dreaming about the homestead idea, but will never, ever do it that are your instant customers. They will come to your place. They will pick your fruit. They will feel like they were on a farm and they'll be so excited about it. Because something we want to do at Better Together Homestead is not just show you our life and how grand and beautiful and amazing it is, but like, what if you could do that same thing in your own way? Let's help you do that. We want to help you make income from your property so that you're able to do more of the things that you love on your homestead. So I don't know that one pro or con weighs out ATX Girl over the other for forested or pasture. But I will tell you, if you have a pasture with no trees at all, you're very vulnerable to all of the seasons. That would be a con. And if you want animals you are limited in your shade to offer them, especially if you're thinking of doing this in Texas. You've got to have shade because your animals are just going to really stress in the hot summer months where they have no place for refuge. Even in a big rainstorm, like they want to be under the trees. They want to be in a place that feels secure, that feels safe for them. So if you're thinking of animals on your property, look at least for some groves of oak if you're, if you're looking in the hill country or the Austin area. So um, oak and even cedar, you can really trim these up. So like cedar is going to grow all the way to the ground. But if you trim them up to about, we call it parking it out. Hey, go to this section of the property, babe. I want you to park it out. And what we're saying is we want you to take that up about six feet so that there are the tree limbs don't start until above our heads. And that way animals can get under it. We can build small little structures. We just make most of our use of property that way. If you do not, if you're in your next five moves and you do not have a chainsaw or you're unwilling to chainsaw or unable to, if, if you, listen first, 
if you have uh you don't have a tractor or you won't be purchasing large machinery at all then i don't know that a heavily wooded area would be good for that kind of person because a person who wants to move to a wooded area also needs to maintain the woods like Every year we have to push back the woods because of, um, like for us, it's Yopon. Yopon just encroaches. It's like, you know, the the nose hair that won't quit. Like you just have to keep maintaining this stinking Yopon. It's great for migrating birds, but if you're not able or interested in getting out a chainsaw or loppers or heavy machinery, this is going to be something that eventually the woods will encroach upon your home and it won't actually be safe to live there with the high winds or storms that could just topple over some of those unhealthy trees. So those are pros and cons. I hope that, I mean, it was just kind of an intro, maybe that was not a, good one. a well, fully can thorough I, one. Can I add one yeah. thing? So ATX <clears throat> girl, there are pros and cons of both. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, get proper, try to find property that has both. Yeah. Like it's that's like you, like you're, you're and where you you're looking, both. you actually are in a great place. I mean, we know because we've looked all around this area. So we've looked from Wimberley to Dallas to Houston and the suburbs and all of those areas. And I think you, you will definitely be able to find something with both. And I will add, it depends on what you want to do on that property. If you ever think that you are wanting to use electric poultry netting, doing electric poultry netting in the woods yeah. is horrible. It's kind of a pain. It is such a pain. So, so just know that, that there, there's pros and cons of both. That's why Kelly's saying that we're about 40% wooded. I would argue that we're probably closer to 60% wooded. I think we're, I think we have more woods than pasture. Um, and That's so, fair. and so, but we're trying, but what we're trying to get is to that 40% wooded with, that's why we bought a tractor. Yeah. So if you can find a piece of property that is about 30 to 40% wooded, and that gives you some privacy, I think that's golden. That would be perfect. And then, of course, having um, pasture, you can have cows. Like cows just don't, you know, they need they need pasture. Mm -hmm. Sheep need pasture. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's, again, your next five moves. If you're vegetarian and you don't want to raise any animals, <clears throat> yeah. that might not be an issue exactly. for you. So really remember that there are some um, tried and true things. Like you want good soil, but you know what? You can always improve soil. You want really great pasture. Yes, but... You also might want to grow native grasses in that pasture. So there's a lot to consider based uh, with the variables of region and your own physical ability, your desire for your property. You know, one of the things we're looking for is a larger property because we want to leave that as an inheritance to our kids. So there's nothing right or wrong about your vision. However, I would consider um, something that we've really been honing in on for our homeschool with our kids, but it's really applying to our homestead, is how do we be nurturers of our property instead of exploitating that property and instead of exploiting it and being exploitators, I think is the word. But um, we don't want to just get what we can from this property the quickest without the without tending to it well. And that might ring home for some of you, which is um, sometimes there's a temptation to get on that property and to do what you have to do to get the most out of it because it looks like everybody from Justin Rhodes to Roots and Refuge to Better Together Homestead is just getting so much done and doing all of these things. But the truth is the true homesteaders, whether you're in an apartment or you are on your property, you're going to want to tend your soil well. You're going to want to steward your property well so that by the end of your life, you've improved this incredible little spot that you have that um really reflects your values so that's that's my kind of like bow on the end of talking about wooded versus pasture wherever you are your property is yours and you have the opportunity to steward that well um, with all of the decisions that you make and it's going to be about the process and learning through it not just what comes at the end That's why Bo hands me the mic and he's like, Kelly, don't go too deep. B, geez, just talk to people. <laughs> but it's true. 
Because if you're homesteading without that, I think you're missing a huge part of it. Let's get out of the deep and let's just go in and answer some easy questions. Does United Portable deliver and set uh, and tie down their units? The answer is yes. So um, our studio, we have some videos about how our studio got delivered. If you love the idea of um, little machines doing big jobs, you'll love that video. So when our studio is delivered, um, they bring it to the, the site pad, which is already prepared. The, we chose a cinder block package just because it works best for the next five moves for our family. And then when they set it down, then they tie it down. And that is um, the ties are already installed in the building before they ever get here, but then they tie it down when they when it arrives. Oh my goodness, I just realized something. Y'all talking about like permanence and next five moves. If we were to move this building, we then have this rock pad. We could build more. We could water. put more water oh, stored, uh, more water tanks right here. Look at this, guys. I know. The great ideas don't just come in the shower. They come <laughs> on the on the Shed to House Lives, too. Okay, I love this question that Mary asks. And um, we probably have time for, like, two more questions. Um, so, Mary Quite, wow, you look like you had a classical education. What a great, what a great thumbnail you have there. Um, any suggestions on what type of tree to plant for shade? Absolutely. So again, consider your next five moves. And this will tie into my topic that you guys basically have squashed because we had so many good questions. Um, <clears throat> so what's happening next on your property and deciding on which types of trees to plant for shade? Go with trees that will not just provide shade, but can also for provide fodder. And these could be trees like right now we in our area are growing a hybrid poplar. We're growing mulberry trees. We're growing um, willow. willow trees. And some of the perks of these trees are that they'll feed our animals. And even right now when we've had severe drought in Texas, we've been able to cut up some of the leaves from our fodder trees and give them to our cows. They are eating them like candy. Like obsessively getting over our garden walls our our fence to our garden just with like the long longest their tongues can reach to grab these fodder trees it's really fun um banana trees are a tree that we're growing for shade which sounds kind of strange but i don't really care if i get a banana from them i just love that they're very hardy and cows will eat, like cows and rabbits cows and, and rabbits maybe sheep will eat probably our pigs too like our animals will eat any of these and remember your trees are also going to contain water so this is a great way to give them a little bit of hydration fiber protein these are really good options to grow depending on where you are you can also grow fruit trees for shade because any kind of tree that's going to give you an understory right a, a part that's close to the ground with a canopy you can grow in those understories as well. So you have multiple little like microclimates that you're creating throughout your property based on shade, water, and uh, the nutrients in the soil. So also look around where you are and like see yeah, what's growing on its own. Yeah. So yeah. you know we have oak, we have cypress. Yeah. I we mean, have if, oak you, if, if you're needing cedar. to plant for shade. Then just kind of look around and see what what's already native there because yeah. that might give you a little bit of a boost if you're if you're putting in here like we would never ask that question in terms of needing to what like meaning it's not since we're so wooded we don't need yeah. to grow trees for shade, for shade. Yeah. you if you if you have no trees then you're going to need to do that um I, that's why i think like looking at native stuff but then also that hybrid poplar wow like hybrid poplar it grows i think something like like 12 feet a year mm -hmm. that is fast well and it's you just, can almost watch it grow. <laughs> well the idea behind it is <clears throat> what are we what are we going to do with this shade is it just shade <clears throat> for us is it going to be shade for animals what makes the most sense for your property and so whatever area you're in Go to the library, go to the local nursery, find out what grows best in your area, 
and then plant those things, especially like, you know, in Houston, it's really common <laughs> for people to plant pine trees. They grow really well there and they grow really <clears throat> fast. So you can plant a pine tree in almost every Katy suburb yard. You're going to find pine trees because the neighborhoods are so new within the last 20 years that they wanted trees to make it look like it had been there a hundred years. So they plant, yeah. they plant um, pine trees. The tr trouble with pine is it's such a soft wood that when you have um, massive hurricanes come through, that those trees are just toppling over. Um, but and nothing's going to grow underneath a pine. That's, like it's that's just so true. acidic. It is. It's rough. So consider the whole picture, not just what's going to give you shade, but what do you want to do with that shade? Um, and where on your property would it fit best? Do you need something that grows <clears throat> super quick? Do you need something that's going to feed animals? Um, do, do the most by doing the least. So if you can do, let's say, for example, this hybrid poplar, which has a really high protein content, doesn't it? Isn't uh, that what's so yeah, I mean, about it? Yeah, it's, it's fan. The, the, the main thing, it's, they like to eat it but it is the fastest growing. Mulberry is well, actually the, the, the most nutritious for yeah. animals. And the good it's thing just about, the slowest growing. And you need you know a water source for that. So if you're trying to throw them for us, for example, if we throw them at the back of our property, which is like zone 30 for us, because we're rarely ever back there right now, um, it wouldn't be as beneficial to the tree as if we tried to put the trees. We have like a whole talk with Pete about trees, don't we? uh not as much i i would yeah trees is the, the, the guy to follow is nick ferguson yeah uh he has a, a company called rare plants uh rare plant store it, it's it's great um you should yeah this this is it is a it depends quite uh answer for the trees it is amazing um it's just a longer conversation um mary so. i just put how you'd spell it it's called hybrid poplar yeah, uh, you know what someone I said there, weeping willow. Weeping willow is fantastic, yeah. uh, especially if you have a lower point in your property that mm -hmm. kind of gets a little boggy, like it has yeah. uh, a little bit. It gets a little stays a little bit more wet. Willow is a fantastic tree that can soak up. It yeah. needs a lot of nutrients. That is why in the back of our property we have not a pond. We have a temporary water hole that holds water, maybe like nine months out of the year really great for riding bikes. because there are willow trees all in yeah. the dam the willow is soaking up everything yeah. so so don't <clears> plant <throat> willow no by your small pond Correct. unless you want to not have a pond anymore yeah there you go okay we'll probably have time for i think a we've few got time more. for one more question guys You know that I've I've had someone said don't buy trees at Walmart. Uh, I we've had a couple of successes so far. Yeah. They haven't died yet. To where we bought uh, bare root trees from Tractor Supply. Yeah, and it they they're alive. Papa like, Pepper says um, we like hey Papa Pepper fruit trees and pastures and poultry pens. <clears throat> Good high nitrogen manure for them. Yep. Shade for the animals. Food for us. This is a perfect i'm going to just post this pop of pepper even though it's not a question i feel like this is a perfect example of looking at how would we use this so beyond just shade can we get multiple functions out of one effort and the mm -hmm. effort would be planting the trees or deciding where your animals go and then getting multiple functions out of that let's say then you turned any of that fruit into farmers market sales if you turned any of that poultry into a you know local share for your community like there are so many ways that we can take this idea of living on the homestead and leaving for a nine to five to at least supplementing the work that we do so that you guys can be at your property more doing more things so if you guys want to know about that then make sure that you just get on our wait list remember this is a non-commitment uh, but I promise you, we have put so much into this course, but was like, I want people to feel like they shouldn't be getting this for free. I want people to feel like they're stealing from us when they <laughs> take this course. And I agree. I, I want people to get into the Get Off Your Tail and Homestead course and feel like, wow, this was so worth the time, the money, 
and the value that you get at the end of it that you're just like blown away. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Georgia does. Okay, I would Georgia. love to stay on all night long, but we have kids and school and this baby is tired. Um, so thank you guys for joining us on Shed to House Live. It is, uh, gosh, middle of August and we just couldn't be happier to be with you guys. This has been going on now for about, gosh, has it been four months? The lives? Yeah, yeah I think maybe. we've been doing live with you guys for four or five months <clears throat> and this is so... Um, this is so life-giving for us. So thank you for every comment that you make. Thank you for every time you order a t-shirt and help us stay afloat. For every time you share your information with us so that we can continue to communicate with you in email. Like remember, we don't have any of the contacts of you guys if you're just chatting here. We can stay in touch with you regardless of what social media does when you get on our email list and we're able to connect with you straight to your inbox. So we want to share one more Shed to House configurator with you. This is one of the things that I think you should be doing that costs you nothing. You should get books when you are planning your shed to house. You should get grid paper when you're planning your shed to house. You do not need to waste your money on conferences and tiny house things for everything else. Do some really affordable things that gets your mind on paper to get you into your shed to house or get you off your tail and onto your homestead. And the configurator is probably my favorite thing because it's like playing Design your house from your computer. You can build as many you as you can want build and as get as many, as many exactly. different uh, quotes. Uh, yeah, it's pretty you can awesome. Find out how much they cost. So, if you guys want to hear from us and you're building your shed to house, feel free. Um, we can follow up with you. Just let us know an email from um, bettertogetherlife at gmail.com. And then the shed to house configurator will either get you a reply email from us or people at United Portable Buildings, our amazing sponsors who we would build a billion of these little houses with because we've enjoyed them so much. So thank you guys for your time. Thank you, United Portable Buildings, for sponsoring this chat. Thank you, Georgia, for not freaking out. Thank you, Bo, for not having a too crazy cough. So we appreciate you guys. We'll see you back here in a couple of weeks at the beginning of September. The first week in September, we'll see you back here on that Monday night. Hopefully we have a pregnant cow by then. Yay! Ooh. Bye, y'all.